guys, this is Hewitt Virtus and welcome back to the channel. And I have a special one for you today. This is a package that came from Australia. And um, the company that sent this to me is Berg's Bags. I believe they were known as Berg's Disport in the beginning, but their website says Berg's Bag right now. And full disclaimer, they actually shipped this to me at no charge to me. So for the first time on this channel, very, very small YouTube channel, um, I have a product at no cost to me to do a, re a review on. They're actually one of the first companies I reached out to. I believe I might have reached out to another company in the past, but I don't remember. Um, um, but so this is the first company, and I typically don't reach out to companies to request for product reviews, but Mike over at Berg Sports responded within 24 hours and uh, just said, yeah, that's fine. And he didn't really ask me for anything in return. Basically, he just wanted me to explore his products and give my overall thoughts and opinions. So this is gonna be um, an unbiased and completely honest. And I know everyone says that about their videos, but I'm gonna go into a separate video as why I typically don't reach out to manufacturers. And uh, my intuition just told me to reach out to Berg Sports as the first manu manufacturer for this. But I'm gonna go to a, a separate video about that later. But for right now, this bag is, I believe, called the Manta. He said he was sending me a bag that was under $100 because I wanted to start that segment. The only bag I own right now that is less than $100 is this Latitude 64 Core bag. It's not a Core Pro, it's a Core bag. I think this also retails for $69.99 um, online. But I got this for, I think, $40 or something. But anyway, so this is the first bag I actually have that I got on sale. And this will be the next bag in the 100 or less dollar segment of my channel. So let's go ahead and dive into it right now. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna try to discuss uh, in a different video about my interaction with Berg's. Uh, it's been very positive. I haven't had any kind of negative feeling. My intuition is generally pretty strong about interactions, even if they're not in person. Obviously I prefer to interact in person, but my understanding is that this bag, I think there's only three videos on YouTube that I could find because on, on Berg Sports website, there wasn't, um, I, I, all I know is that the Manta is a recycled, I'm sorry, it's a bag that is made of recycled materials. So basically it's made of recycled bottle, bottle material or recycled plastic material. And it's made of a 900D R-PET. R-PET just means recycled polyester. And I can't wait to see, this is the first recycled bag I'm on this channel. This is the first bag that is um, sent to me for review without me paying a dime. So it's very special to me for those two reasons. But it's not special in a way where, oh, I get a free product and I'm just gonna review and I'm just gonna say whatever the manufacturer wants me to say. No, it's special to me because that means I'm doing something right and my channel is going in a direction that I really, really want to go to. So for me, it's more of a milestone and I think that's why it's special to me. But here we are. Oh, I'm loving the way the weave looks already. Oh goodness. Well, I didn't even need this knife. This, so my friend bought a paratrooper last year when he started dip playing disc golf. And gotta be honest, the paratrooper looked really cheaply made to me. So I'm actually excited to see what this bag is. Holy smokes. Oh my gosh. This actually looks really good. I am like a material, like gear dork. So anytime I see something that is like, Interesting to me, I gravitate to it immediately. Okay, so let's go ahead and read the inspiration be behind the Manta. If you go to this website right here, you can do all the research about the Manta, which is a recyclable, renewable um, program that is gonna be starting. I don't know if it's already started or not since Berg's uh, has been through three different prototypes, I believe. But basically, it's this little machine contraption that it goes onto the sea and the oceans and captures and grabs all the plastic bottles and materials from the sea and the ocean and the waters to bring back to um, land to recycle into <coughs> materials like backpacks, um, clothing, and other materials as well. So for recycled, 
I'm sorry, I keep saying, for a bag that's made of recycled materials, the zippers are actually water resistant. And that is phenomenal. I love that. So for a bag that's at less than $100, I can tell you right now, there are bags that are $200 that are not this good <laughs> with their zipper qualities. Um, so I'm on the right track. This is actually really good for a first bag, especially made of recycled material. Like I can't even tell that this is, this is pretty flipping cool. All right, so let's go ahead and start the bag. Now it does, it comes flat. It, I don't think it has any, um, any kind of plastic materials. There's a desiccant. We don't need that. So I think it just unfolds and off the bat, I always just check for stitching. I don't care where it's made from. I don't care if it's made in USA. I don't care if it's made from Sweden, Norway. It doesn't matter where. I'm gonna check for stitching and off the bat, we got really good stitching so far. Nothing is fraying. And this inner liner material feels really solid. A lot better than some of the $200 bags I've used. So that is very promising. There are some foam and pretty thick size foam, probably an, an eighth or a quarter foam on, on the sides here. And I think that's gonna, what's gonna help with the rigidity of the bag. However, I actually do like that it's not plastic piece. So that way it'll keep the bag light, but it'll still have some rigidity versus, um, versus not having any. And I'm telling you, I don't know if this camera will catch this, but this 900D, it feels like almost like a thousand D Cordura, which if this is what our pet is all about, I am totally game and on board with this. This is amazing. And so the Berg's, this is the Berg's logo. It's actually stitched on here. Not, it's not like, it's actually stitched row by row with stitching to make the logo. It's not like a patch where they stitch around it. No, this is actually full on stitching. That is, I haven't seen that on a bag. That's pretty cool. So the rest of the bag, we have a Velcro strip right here that it probably mates to this right here. So I am digging that. And then it just unfolds itself and then you just start putting stuff in there. There's a top pocket here with also water resistant zippers. I've seen bags where some zippers are water resistant and some bags are, some zippers are not. And then there's the pocket, which I assume is for a putter pocket, or you can put your jacket or, or hoodie in there that would fit. If you're only carrying 12 discs, you can definitely put your jacket and hoodie in there. And then we got a handle and the handle has a mesh right here a mesh padding and then we got two d rings again i've seen some 200 dollars bags even 400 dollars bags that don't come with d rings <laughs> so kudos to burke sports for doing that we have uh, a mesh material right here mesh pocket here very simple design stitch on the outside i mean it's not the cleanest look in the world but that's functional and i, I think I do notice that using bags, so many bags over the years, I do wish this would be a thing for bags or just some bags because when I put my, my powder, my um, dry bag, some of the dry bags are so powdery, it gets in the pocket, but I think this would help air it out a little bit more. But who knows, maybe the dry bag will get too wet if that happens. So I'll have to think more about that, about that statement. Again, these side pockets, very nice big side pocket. We also have the water resistant zipper. And these zipper pulls are like the ones on grip bags. So that's a solid, solid right there. And then we got the bottom, which is that 900D. The whole bag is 900D, it looks like. But it's 900D or PET, not Cordura, which is recycled polyester material. And the thing, cool thing about our pet is this is a recycled material bag. This bag itself can also be recycled again. So any our pet material can be recycled as long as the dye gets taken off and it gets clean, just like any other plastic. So that is a cool feature in my opinion. Um, and then we got this pocket over here for a water bottle and that is, it looks like it's big enough for a 32 ounce or 40 ounce, to be honest. I'll have to test that out. And then we have a grommet at the bottom, for a drain grommet. And then on this side, we have this strap. This is to hold umbrella or stool is what I'm guessing it's for. We have the same water resistant zipper on this side. There's a little pocket here. Let's see how big this pocket is. 
it's just a little pocket that you can fit your wallet or your keys in there so that's pretty nice and then so that's the front of the bag right there and the side of this bag we got a big pocket here which you can put your phone in there my my, uh, my guess and then the back of the bag is going to be this very simple strap there's nothing you know crazy about it just a simple bag there's no sternum strap but you got soft mesh material we got mesh right here we got mesh right here and then we also have oh a water resistant zipper right here and that's a big so i can probably put my phone in there that's a big let me see i have my phone with me so oh yeah that's perfect yeah look at that that is pretty cool all right so yeah there's a pocket in the back here that i don't know if most people would find that because it's like kind of like meshed in there all right let me go ahead and fill this thing up and see how it looks here we go all right so this has been my bag this winter between this and the lower bag i've been trying a lot of discs so I, i've been using this bag because it carries a little bit more discs and more stuff than the lower so i'm going to go ahead and try to stuff as many discs from this bag to here right now i have two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen seventeen 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So 24 four discs. Let's see if it'll fit in this bag. Here we go. So let's start with the main compartment here. So it holds. And I apologize for the coughing in the background. It's my three-year-old. She's getting over a cold. And I asked her to be very polite in the background behind the camera. She has been really good, so I've been asked, she asked to go on her tablet. I said, okay. And I said, well, mom's gonna try and do a video while you do that. And she said, okay, mom. So, all right. We got the, here we go. Okay. <laughs> I literally stuffed everything that was in here, in the main compartment here. It's tight, obviously, but there's 17 discs in there. So it's a little tight. I'm going to go ahead and put this flap up like this. And I'm going to try and stuff this top bag here. The top pocket, I mean. So here's my putting putters. Okay, so there we go. And then here are my other putters. So four putters. It's a little tight. I think it's because it kind of impedes into this space right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take one out. And just leave three putters up here. Go out, go out and do it. Honey, go out, go out the door to the bathroom and take care of your nose. So if I do that, that's how it would look. And if I put three putters in here, it will fit. So three plus 17 is 20. Now, can I put a, uh, like an approach? Okay, this is a zone. Up here, yes, I can certainly do that. And that's how it would fit. Now, I don't know, let's see. Pulling disc in and out of it, actually is that not bad. I mean, it's it's a compact bag, so you're gonna have some sacrifices compared to a big bag, for sure. Which is fine, this is kind of what you kind of deal with when you have a compact bag and you want a compact bag. Um, so there you go. Now, it's interesting because it does not have the sides, it saves weight, however, in order for it to keep its shape, you kind of have to leave your discs in here. So far, let's see here. We're going to do this side right here. I'm actually, all right. So that's what the bag looks like so far. I can tell you right now, when you lift up this handle, it kind of like folds in on itself right here. So that's interesting. Let me try. I'll have to play with this obviously when I'm on the course to get the quirkiness of this bag and figure out how it should be used. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it on and uh, see how it looks. Okay, so I got the water bottle in here. It's a small water bottle, but I can, I'm pretty positive this can fit 32 ounce in there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is gonna put this 20 discs in here. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on and see how it feels. Oh my goodness, there we go. Oh, okay. Huh. Interesting. I don't know if it's just I'm not used to wearing bags like this, but oh my. Huh. 
Huh. It is, <laughs> it's so tiny on my bag. This is the tiniest bag I've ever used for disc golf besides the Walmart plastic bag that I used the first time I disc golf. But I didn't wear that on my bag. Whereas, anyway. 20 discs feels really light when you use a very small bag to carry it that doesn't have a lot of plastic panels and padding and things like that. So the straps don't, do not feel bad. They are a little thin and so the mesh material because it's so thin, the moment you put it on, it kind of compresses a little bit. I don't know how it's going to be for long term when I'm on the course, but we're going to find out. Um, the back of the bag right now, the mesh material at the bottom, it feels like it's conforming to the back like this. And I think it's more of because it's um, such a very thin wall of the back panel of the backpack. So it kind of conforms to the bag. All right, so my overall first impressions is that this bag is lightweight. It is compact in design. It is of higher quality material. At least it feels that way. I don't know as far as long-term use, but we'll see. And um, the it reminds me of the D Dynamic Disc Trooper bag in design. However, it feels higher quality. And there are there is a $10 difference between this bag and the Trooper bag. Although you can, sometimes can find the Trooper bag on a really great sale. Um, I'm looking forward to see how this bag handles the course. Um, for someone my size, it's super lightweight, it's super compact, and I really enjoy that component when I first put it on. So we'll see how that works. Anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and use this bag, <laughs> get hit the course with this. But I do want to shout out to Berg Sports, Mike over at Berg Sports for sending out this bag, and um, I can't wait to see what the next bag he's going to send me. Yes, he is planning on sending me another bag that is a little bit bigger than this. I believe it's one of the touring bags, and I'm excited to see what that bag uh, has to offer. So if this bag, this, his, his uh, $69.99 bag is already like this, and it's already made a really good impression on me like this, I, I really can't imagine what his next bag is going to be like. So yes, I am working with Burst Ports. I am not sponsored by them. All I did was work, ask them if they wanted me to review their product, and um, he said yes. And so I'm really, really grateful for a small YouTube channel like mine to get my hands on something for a review at no cost. It uh, tremendously helps, so I appreciate all of that consideration from Burke Sports. I will have the link in uh, the description of this video of where to get this bag, and uh, you can get it from his um, website out of Australia, or you can actually get it from, I believe, 987 Disc Sports, who also is a retailer dealer for Berg's bags. All right, this is Seymour Virdisk, and I will see you guys in the next video. Comment below on what bag you want me to do a first impressions on, and um, I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.